Hey everyone! In this video I'll show you how to make this cropped crochet top. I've made it in a size small but it's adjustable for size and I show you how to do that in the video as well as provide a centimeter and inch measurement guide in case you want to make it with a different size hook and yarn. As always if you have any questions please feel free to leave them below and I will try to get back to you. For this top I used just under 250 grams of 8 ply yarn. The main body of my top was made with the Feels Like Butter yarn from Lions Brand which is acrylic but the other two colours I used were the same size but they're a cotton blend. This yarn is also a little bit stretchy so keep that in mind when picking what yarn you want to use. I also used a 4mm hook, stitch markers, a darning needle and a pair of scissors. Okay, so to start we're going to be using our 4mm hook. So you can grab the end of your yarn and make a slip knot. Insert your hook and now we're going to do a chain up of 9. So now we are not going to stitch into that first chain, we're going to skip that first chain and go straight into the second chain from the hook and we're going to do one single crochet into every chain so that will give us eight single crochets in total. So now skipping that first chain I'm going to go straight into the second chain, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So now into that next chain along, I'm going to do another single crochet, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Alright, so now you can go down the rest of the row doing one single crochet into every chain and you should have eight single crochets in this row. And just doing the last one. Okay, so now I've got my eight single crochets. So we're going to chain up one, turn around, and we're going to go back down this row doing one single crochet into every stitch from the previous stitch. So from now on we'll be doing a chain up of one at the end and then one single crochet into each of the eight stitches from the previous row, but we're going to do back loop stitches. So not going into that chain that we just used to turn around, we're going to go into the next stitch down and you can see here that there's a front loop which is this one closest to your body and a back loop which is the one furthest away from your body and you want to go into that back loop only. So you're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So a normal single crochet into the back loop only. So now I'm going to go down the rest of the row until I have eight back loop single crochets. Now I've got eight, we're going to chain up one, turn around and continue doing rows of eight back loop single crochets until this band is long enough to go halfway around your body. So I will leave the row counts for all the different sizes here as well as the centimeter and inch measurements but if you would like to make it custom to your body you can measure your own waist measurement and add a little bit and halve it. I also just wanted to note that the row and stitch counts as well as the centimetre and inch measurements have been calculated based on a standardised sizing chart which I will leave linked in the description in case you wanted to check that out for your sizing. Okay so once you have done as many rows as you need to do you should have finished your ribbing and I've just done my last stitch there and I'm going to chain up one and we're going to do single crochets along the top of the ribbing row. So this is the bottom band of our top, or well, half of it, and we're going to go up from there. So to do that you'll need to do one single crochet into every row. So this would be the first row here and then this raised row is the second row and then the divot row is the third, fourth, fifth, etc. So I'm just going to go into that first row, yarn over, pull through, and pull through two. And now into that second row. Going into the top of the rows is going to be harder than doing a regular stitch because there's not really a stitch there to go into but you just need to find a gap 
and um, even if they're not quite even from distance apart, they'll they'll even out. So don't worry too much. You just want to make sure you're putting one in in every row, and you're not doing too many or not enough. So I'm gonna go into those ones, and you'll know you've done the right amount if you have the same number of single crochets that you do of rows. So if you have the right However many rows you have, that's how many single crochets you need to do in this row and it's also going to be the same number of single crochets that we do for the next few rows after that. So go ahead and go all the way down the rest of the row, then when you get to the end of the row, join back in and I'll show you what we're going to be doing for the next few rows. Okay, so I'm just doing my last stitch in that row. And now I'm going to chain up one. So the repeating pattern for the next little while is just going to be single crochets into the previous row. So we're not doing back loop singles like we did for the ribbing, they're just going to be regular singles. So I'm just going to go in through both loops. So we've got the front loop here and the back loop here. We're going to go through both loops and do a single crochet. So that's insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through both of the loops on the hook. So you can just go down the rest of the row doing a regular single crochet into every stitch from the previous row and keep going till you get to the end. And then you're going to do the same thing that we did here, chain up one, turn around and go back again. So this is going to be what we do for the next uh, 24 rows, including this row. So it's going to be 25 rows in total starting from this first one where we went into the ribbing. But if you want to count from where we're up to now, once I finish this row, it'll be 23 more rows, but including this row, it's 24. And this is going to be from the bottom of your top up till under your armpit. So if you want this top to be more cropped than more how I have it, you can do less rows in this section. And if you want it to be a bit longer, you can do more rows in this section, just as long as you make sure you do the exact same number of rows for both the front panel and the back panel. So you can put as many rows as you want or as few rows as you want in this section, but I'm going to do 25. So if you like the length of my top, then you can do 25 also. So join back in once you've done 25 rows in this section. And I should have said that the 25 rows is for all sizes. Okay, so once you have finished the first 25 rows in that section after the ribbing, we are going to leave a bit of room for our armpits. So I'm going to turn up one as usual, turn around, and now we're going to do some slip stitches. So I'm going to go in through both the front and back loop like we've been doing, yarn over, pull through, and pull through again for our first slip stitch. And now I'm going to go into the next one, yarn over, pull through, and pull through again. So for me doing a size small, I need to do five slip stitches in this section. Uh, but here are the number of slip stitches that you'll need to do depending on the size that you're making as well as the centimeter and inch guides. So now that I've done my five stitches, I'm going to do a decrease into the next two stitches. So this is all sizes joining back in. Um, we're going to do one decrease. So we're going to insert, yarn over, pull through, and then into that next stitch, I'm going to insert yarn over, pull through. So you should have three loops on the hook. I'm going to yarn over and pull through all three loops. So this is a single crochet, sorry, I should have said, it is a single crochet decrease. So no matter what size you're making, you'll do a decrease here as well. And now we're gonna go down doing our single crochets as normal. So back to the pattern that we've been doing. And you wanna keep going down this row until you have as many stitches left as you did slip stitches plus two. So you, you'll be able to work it out when we get close to the end and I'll put up on the screen how many stitches you need to leave free at the end. But I did five slip stitches and a decrease. So when I get to the end, so that's seven. So when I get to the end, I need to leave the last seven stitches free and that's what you'll need to do as well. So keep going until you have as many stitches free at the end as you need and we're going to do another decrease 
and I will show you how to do that as well as the next rows. Just doing my last single crochet. So I have seven stitches left on this row now. So into those next two stitches, I'm going to do a decrease like we did before. So to do the single decrease, it's insert, yarn over, pull through, and then straight into that next stitch, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. So now you should have, I have five stitches remaining free and you should have as many as you did slip stitches at the start and we're going to leave them completely free. So we're gonna chain up one and turn around. So now I'm gonna go and do another decrease again straight away. So into that first stitch, I'm going to do my first part of the decrease and then the second part of the decrease, yarn over, pull through three. And now go down the rest of the row doing single crochets as normal. So now you'll just need to go down till you get to the other end and into those last two stitches of this row, we're going to do another decrease. So for the next little while, we're going to be doing one decrease at either end of every row and I'm going to be doing eight rows in total. So I'm currently on the second row and once I finish this row, I will do six more rows, but it's eight in total. And I will also pop up on the screen the centimeter and inch measurements for these eight rows in case you're using a different size hook and yarn. If you want to see the decreases again, join back in. Otherwise you can go ahead and do eight rows in this section with one decrease at either end of each row. I'm back up to the other end. And you might just want to count the slip stitches and make sure that you're going into the right stitches because the slip stitches are quite a bit smaller than the single crochet, so they pull that decrease a bit tight. So I did five slip stitches, so I've got one, two, three, four, and five. So that means that these are the last two stitches here. So I'm going to do a decrease into those last two stitches. So I'm going to do the first part of my decrease and the second. And there's my one decrease. So now I'm going to chain up one, turn around, and we're going to do another decrease straight away. So now you can go ahead until you have eight rows in total in this decrease section. So you should have two decreases in every row, meaning you'll have 16 decreases in total because you have one at each end. So go ahead until you've done eight rows in total for this section and then join back in. Now you should have made it to the end of that decrease section. So this is the point where the front and the back panels will differ. So for my back panel, I'm not changing colors. I'm just doing one color the whole way up. So this next section is going to be done continuing with this color. So if you're doing the back panel, don't go ahead and do the color change like I'm about to do. I mean, you could put the color on the back too if you want. Totally up to you if you want to put the color on the back. It's not going to change anything, but I'm going to keep the back as plain and the front with the stripes. So I'm going to do a color change now for the front panel, but if you are making the back panel, jump to the back panel section of the video. I'll leave all the timestamps down in this description so that you can jump to the back panel but up until this point it is identical for the front and the back panel. So to do this next step with the front panel I'm going to need to change colors and I actually want this loop here to be the first change of color. Um, it's normally a little bit less obvious so I'm actually going to undo that last stitch that I did. And I'm going to do it again, but I'm not going to do that last pull through. So I'm going to do the first part, yarn over, pull through, and into that next loop, insert, yarn over, pull through. And I'm not going to pull through, I'm going to grab my next colour and I'm going to just hold it. You could uh, do a slip knot if you wanted to, but I'm just going to hold it underneath and hold it pretty tight so that it doesn't um, pull through. And now I'm just going to pull that loop through those last three loops. So now we've changed colors. So I'm gonna chain up one as normal, turn around. And now we have finished with the decreases. So these next rows with the color change are going to be straight rows with no increases or decreases. So I'm just going to do one single crochet with the orange into every single crochet of the previous row. So into that first stitch, I'm gonna insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. So just a normal single crochet. We've just got a different color. 
So you can go along the rest of the row doing your single crochets as normal. When you get to the end, just chain up one, turn around and keep coming back with the orange. You can do as many rows as you want to do with each colour. I'm doing four rows of each of my two colours, so eight rows in total but four for each colour and the rows are about two centimetres high each. However, this part is totally customizable. You can do as many rows for each color as you want. And I'll be doing the eight rows for the colors and then going back to the burgundy for 14 more rows. So all sizes will have 22 rows in total. I'll also pop up the centimeter and inch measurements for this section. So as long as you do 22 rows, it doesn't matter what colors you use and how many times you change colors. So go ahead and create the stripey pattern that you want. Also, if you want to check how many single crochets across the chest I've done and for all the different sizes, this is how many stitches this chest panel is across. But if you've done the underarm portion and the decreases, you should be on that number anyway. It's just if you want to check or if you're using different size hook and yarn. Okay, so I'm almost at the end and I'm just going to do my last two single crochets and no decreases or increases. So we're just going to chain up one, turn around, and continue on with this pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and do four rows with this orange color and if you're following this pattern you can do that too or you can do a different number but if you want to see the color change again join back in and I will show you swapping from this color to my next color. So I'm almost at the end of this color that I'm using and I'm going to do my second last single crochet. So now I'm about to do my last single crochet that I want to do with this color and we're going to change colors halfway through the stitch. So I'm going to insert as normal, yarn over, pull through. Now I'm going to grab my next color and again you can do a slip knot if you want otherwise I'm just going to hold it down underneath and pull the orange tight and I'm going to hold that down too. Now I'm going to yarn over with the pink and pull it through. Chain up, one. So now you can give those a tug, turn around and continue on with this color. So you can swap as many times as, if, as you want. I am going to be swapping back to my burgundy maroon color after I've finished with the pink. And I'm going to keep going until I get to the end of row 22. So go ahead and do as many color changes as you want to do in this section and join back in when you're also at the end of row 22 and I'll show you the next part which will be our neckline. Okay, so once you have done your 22 rows in total for this section, your top should be looking something like this, depending on what you did with the stripes. So I've got four rows with the orange stripes, four rows with the pink stripes, and then I've got 14 rows again with the burgundy bringing up to the top. So we've got our 25 rows for the first section, eight rows for the second, four, four, and 14. Now we're going to get started on the shoulder portions and we'll be doing one on either side, but I'm gonna start off with this one because that's where the yarn is still attached. So depending on the size that you are making, the number of stitches that you'll need to stitch into will be a bit different. For me making a size small, I'm going to do a single crochet into the first 12 stitches in this row. But these are the number of stitches that you'll need to do depending on the size that you're making as well as the centimeter and inch measurements. So I have just done 12 stitches into this row and I'm going to do a decrease into the next two stitches. So into that next stitch we insert yarn over pull through and then straight into that next stitch. Insert yarn over pull through and pull through two. Now I'm going to chain up one, turn around and do another decrease straight away. So into those first two stitches I'm going to do my single crochet decrease. Now just going down the rest of the row as normal, doing one single crochet into every stitch. When we get to the end, we're going to chain up one, turn around and come back. And we're going to continue doing the rows with the decreases on the end that is closer to the middle of the top and keeping this side edge straight with no increases or decreases. 
So now I'm at the end, I'm going to chain up one, turn around, and I'm going to put one single crochet into every stitch and then a decrease into the last two stitches. I will show you the lot of decreases one more time. And I've got two stitches left. I'm going to go into that first one and a decrease into the second. Chain up one, turn around, and another decrease. Okay, so you can keep going doing your rows with the decrease at the end close to the middle of your top and no increases or decreases on the arm side. And you'll need to do 10 rows in total in this section. I've also popped up the centimeter and inch measurements in case you want to see those, but otherwise just go ahead until you get to the end of row 10 in this decrease neckline section. Now we are going to do a couple of rows with no increases or decreases. So I'm just going to chain up, turn around, and I'm going to put one single crochet into every stitch of the previous row. So I only have four stitches left, but you may have a different number if you're doing a different size. So this is the number of stitches that you should be up to depending on the size that you're making as well as the centimetre and inch measurements. And all sizes will need to do four rows in this section. The four rows in this section will be about two centimetres. So you can just go ahead and do that with no increases or decreases. So I'm just doing the second row in this section and I'll do two more rows and then we will have finished this side of the front panel. Chain up one and pull a tail. So that is what this section for the front panel will look like. And now we are going to replicate the same thing on the other side, but we're going to have to start from the middle for this one. Because of the way that the stitches are going and the last row that we did in this section was going this way, we're gonna to need to start off by going the other way towards the shoulder. So we're gonna start off in the middle. I'm going to leave a bit of a tail on this one so that I can use that tail to stitch it up. So I will grab the end of my yarn and make a slip knot. and insert my hook. So for this side, we're going to count the same number of stitches that we did on the first side, and then we're gonna add two because we did a decrease after we did our first stitches. So I did 12 stitches, I'm gonna add two and that's 14. So I'm gonna count 14 stitches, but these are the number of stitches that you will need to count depending on your size, as well as the centimeter and inch measurements. So now I'm going to insert my hook into that stitch Yarn over, pull through Pull through again and then I'm going to chain up one Alright, now I'm going to turn around So into that stitch that we just went into so the number of stitches that you would have counted go back into that stitch and I'm going to do a single crochet decrease so in through that stitch yarn over pull through and into the next stitch yarn over pull through and pull through all three loops so I'm going to go down the rest of the row doing my regular single crochets until you get to the end when you get to the end chain up one turn around and come back to the middle where we're going to do the decreases again. So this is going to be exactly the same as on the other side, it's just that we're starting in the middle rather than starting at the edge. So now I'm at the other end, chain up one, turn around and back down. Okay so now I've got two stitches left. So I'm going to do a decrease into those last two stitches. So I'll do another decrease. 
pull through three loops, chain up one, turn around, and another decrease straight away. So just like the other shoulder portion of this front panel, you're going to need to do 10 rows in this section. Making sure to do the decreases on the inside part of the shoulder towards the chest and no increases or decreases on the outside where your arm will be. I'm just doing my last stitch in this section and it's a decrease. So no matter what size you're making, the last stitch for this section will also be a decrease because we started in the middle. So now that I've done that, I'm going to chain up one and I'm going to go back to the rows with no increases or decreases. So we're just going to do straight rows with single crochets. So one single crochet into every stitch of the previous row. You should have the same number of stitches in every row that you did for the other side of the shoulder and we're also going to do four rows in this section with no increases or decreases. And then we will be finished with the front panel. So just like the other side, chain up one and pull a tail long enough to stitch up your shoulder chunk. So once you've finished that, your front panel should be looking a little something like this. Now we're going to get started on the back panel and you will need to do the bottom ribbing and the bit under the armpit up to the end of the eight decrease rows. Just like we did for the front panel, it's going to be exactly the same. So go back to the start of the video if you haven't already and do that part and then join back in here when you get to the end of the eight rows with the decreases. So I've got all of my decreases along here and I've just done a decrease. The last stitch that I did into that previous row was a decrease. And now we're going to chain up one, turn around, and now I'm going to go back to what we were doing for this first section after the ribbing where we just did the straight rows with the same number of stitches in every row, no increases or decreases. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and do one single crochet as normal into every stitch of the previous row. When you get to the end, turn up one, turn around, come back and just keep doing rows with no increases or decreases, just like we did over here. This section is going to have 28 rows and I've also put the centimeter and inch measurements up on the screen. So you're just going to do the rows with no increases or decreases until you've done 28 rows. I've also put up the number of stitches that you should have in each row. So if you wanted to double check that you can, but if you've done the same number of stitches under the armpit and for the decrease rows, that should be what you're up to anyway. Okay, so once you have done your 28 rows for this section of the back panel, so we've got 25 rows for this bottom part, eight rows, and then 28 rows. We're gonna do the shoulder portion for the back panel. So to start, I'm going to turn up one and then turn around. So we are going to do single crochets into the first few stitches. For me making a size small, I'm going to do it into the first eight stitches, but these are the number of stitches you'll need to do depending on the size that you're making, as well as the centimeter and inch measurements. So I'm gonna go ahead and do eight. And once you've done as many as you need to do for your size, we're going to do a decrease into the next two stitches. So into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, and into the next stitch. Yarn over, pull through, yarn over, and pull through two. Now we're gonna chain up one, turn around, and I'm gonna do another decrease straight away. I'm gonna go into those first two stitches with a decrease. Yarn over, pull through three, chain up one, and then one single crochet into all of the remaining stitches. So you're just going to need to keep doing this pattern until you have done six rows. So I am going to keep going until I only have four stitches left, but that will be different depending on your size. So these are the number of stitches that you'll have left at the end. Now I'm at the end of my sixth row for this section. So I've done, I've done one decrease in every row. 
and now I've got four stitches left but that will be a dip, bit different depending on your size and that's it for the back panel so now I'm going to get started on the shoulder section for the other side of the back panel so we're going to do what we did for the front panel and join in in the center so that the stitches are going the correct way so what you're going to need to do is count into the middle the number of stitches that you did in this first part plus two so I did eight stitches and then plus two because I did the decrease so that's ten so I'm going to count ten stitches from this side but I will pop up on the screen how many stitches you need to count depending on your size as well as the centimeter and inch measurements so then you're going to grab the end of your yarn and make a slip knot insert your hook and into that stitch that you counted Right, so now I'm going to yarn over, pull through, pull through again, chain up one, and turn. Okay, so now I'm going to go into that stitch that we just did, so straight back into that same stitch. And I'm going to do a decrease, so the first half of a decrease, and then the second half of a decrease into that second stitch. And there we go. So now one single crochet into every stitch all the way down to the end. Turn up one and turn. Alright, so now I'm going to do one single crochet into each stitch of the previous row again, but I'm going to do a decrease in the last two stitches. So the exact same thing as the other side. We are just starting from the opposite end. So we're going to finish on the opposite end as well. So one more and now my decrease. Train up one, turn and another decrease straight away. So now you're going to keep going until you get to the end of row six and then we will have finished the back panel. So join back in at the end of row six. I thought I'd jump back in to show you the last row just in case it's a bit confusing because we are ending on a decrease. So I'm going to do my single crochet uh, into those first stitches and then into the last two stitches of that row I'm going to do another decrease and that is the last stitch that we will do for this back panel so you can chain up one and pull a tail. Okay, so once you have finished both of your panels, we are going to stitch them together. So you can put your back panel down and then put your front panel on top of it. And it doesn't matter which side you face your front and back panels, but if you have made a mistake on one of your sides, you should put that on the outside right now. So either facing the table if it's the back panel or facing up if it's the front panel, because we're gonna turn it inside out and the inside is going to be our good side. Okay, so once you have lined up the shoulders, you can go ahead and stitch them together. I'm going to use slip stitches to do that, um, but you can also just use a darning needle if you prefer. And insert my hook. So now into all of the stitches for both the front and back panel, they will line up. So I've got four in both. You just insert through one panel and then through the other panel, yarn over, pull through and pull through again. So basically a slip stitch. So I'm going to go through the next stitch and in through the back panel stitch and slip stitch. The next one and the last one. Right, now you can chain up one and pull the tail through. So that's it. Let's go ahead and do that to the other side. Once you have stitched those shoulder chunks together, we're going to stitch the sides together. So I'm going to use a darning needle to stitch together my sides. So if you also want to do the same, grab your darning needle. Otherwise you can do what we did for the top part of the shoulder and do slip stitches. And you should have the same number of rows and stitches for the front and back panels, so it should line up exactly. And I'm just going to grab some yarn 
and put it on my needle. I normally like to allow double and a bit for the yarn when I'm stitching, so that's a little bit more than double and I'll just give it a little bit extra room as well because it's better to have too much than not enough. So now you just need to make sure that you're going through both panels and try to go through the exact same stitch or row for both of the panels. So this first little section is going to be the easiest because it's stitches. So you've got all of the stitches should line up and then you just need to make sure that all of the rows are lined up all the way up to under the armpit. Going through the end of the rows is a little bit more tricky because there's not a designated spot for the stitch, but just um, pick up the edge stitches if you can. And continue going all the way up till you get to the end of under the armpit and then go ahead and stitch the other side together as well. Okay, so once you've stitched everything up, we're going to get started on the trim. I've already done this one side, so ignore that for now. I'm going to do the neckline first. So what you need to do is grab the end of your yarn and make a slip knot. Count to the middle stitch in between the two shoulder chunks. It doesn't need to be perfectly exact, but the closer you can get, probably the better. So that one there, I'm just going to grab a stitch marker. And now I'm going to flip it over. So at the moment, it is good side out. So I've got the good top is facing the camera now. And this is the good back side as well. Now I'm going to grab the slip knot that I made and put it on my hook and insert into where that stitch marker is. Now I'm going to yarn over, pull through, and pull through again, and chain up three. Okay, so now I'm going to do double crochets into every stitch. So into all of these stitches here, until we get to the shoulder chunk, it's going to be one double crochet into every stitch. So I'm going to yarn over, insert into that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And again, yarn over, insert into that stitch, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two loops, yarn over, pull through the second two loops. All right, so now go down the rest of the row doing a double crochet into every stitch until you get to the shoulder chunk where we start, where we have the decreases. We're going to do some stitch twos together. All right, last one. So now for every stitch that is in this decrease section, we're going to do a decrease. So we're gonna do a double crochet decrease. So I'm gonna yarn over, find a spot in that first two rows, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Now, instead of pulling through the last two, I'm gonna do another yarn over and go into a different loop from that uh, combo of two rows. So into that next loop, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and now you're going to yarn over and pull through all three loops on the hook. So that's our double decrease. And I've done one stitch into the end of every row because this is two rows here and I've done two stitches. So now I'm gonna find another place for my hook and do another decrease. So yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through the first two. Now yarn over, find another loop, yarn over, pull through, 
Yarnova 432 and Yarnova 433. All right, so now you can go ahead and do the decreases into all of the rows until you get to the end of the chest decreases. So we're gonna go all the way along this front of the chest doing the decreases, making sure to put one stitch into the end of every row or one decrease into every two rows if that's easier for you to uh, work out mentally. I'm just doing my last decrease for my last two rows. Into that last one there and decrease. All right. So once you've done that, we're going to go back to doing the one double crochet into every stitch. This bit is a lot easier because we're going into the stitches and not the row ends. So I'm going to go back to doing a normal double crochet. So regular double crochet into that first stitch and keep going until you get to the other shoulder chunk. And then we're going to do the same thing with the decreases going up the other side and around to the back, but I will keep all of this in the recording just in case you want to see again. Okay, so now I've just done my last double crochet in this front chest section and we're going to start the decreases again. So into that, the end of that first row, I'm going to find a loop and do my first double crochet decrease, just like we did on the other side. And find another loop for that second row. And there's my first decrease. So now for the rest of all of the other rows, I'm gonna put one stitch into every row or one decrease into every two rows and keep going till you get all the way to the end of the uh, back portion of the decreases for the shoulder. And I'm just doing my last double crochet decrease and into that last stitch. So now all we have to do to finish it off is put one double crochet into all of the remaining stitches in the back section and then we're going to join up to this first chain. So one double crochet into every stitch. All right, and into the top of the chain row. So I'm going to go into that first stitch there, yarn over, pull through, pull through again, chain up one and pull a loop. So it might be a little bit bunchy, it might be pulled a little bit tight, but once you sort of put it on and wear it, it'll even up and it shouldn't be bumpy around your neck. It shouldn't stick up straight, which was my aim with doing the decreases. Okay, so now we're going to get started on the trim for the arm. And same thing as for the neckline trim, you want the good side of the top to be facing out. So the outside's on the outside right now and the inside's on the inside. So what you're going to need to do is grab your yarn and make a slip knot. Insert your hook. And now we're gonna go to the join where we stitched up the sides together. And I'm just going to insert my hook into one of the first stitches, kind of in between. And I'm going to yarn over, pull through, pull through again. Okay, now I'm gonna chain up three. So we're going to be doing something similar to what we did to the neck, um, but we're going to do the decreases for this section along the bottom that was on the edge of the side of the front and back panels. And we're also gonna do the decreases for the eight rows that had the angled decreases. So I'll pop up on the screen how many stitches this will be for each of the sizes, but you're basically just going to be doing the decreases in all the stitches that you did under the armpit. So I'm going to yarn over and into that first stitch, insert yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and 
yarn over again into that next stitch, insert yarn over, pull through, pull through two, and pull through three. So exactly the same as what we did for the neck ribbing, I'm going to do another decrease. So into those next two stitches. And now I'm up to the section that has the eight rows of decreases. So I'm going to be doing, like we did for the neck, one decrease for every two rows or one stitch into every row that's part of a decrease. So you're just gonna have to force your hook into a spot again, like we did for the neckline. So I've got one decrease. And keep going until you have done decreases for all of the rows that have the angled decrease under the armpit. And that's it. This is the first row of the section that's going straight. So once you've done that, we're just gonna do standard double crochets. So just like for the neckline, I'm gonna yarn over, insert, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two again. So for this whole section, we're just gonna do regular double crochets with no increases or decreases all the way around until you get back to this decrease section again. So you can go ahead and put one double crochet into the end of every row and join back in when you get to the other armpit. Okay, so now I've made it all the way over the shoulder and back to the front and I am up to the rows with the decreases. So for the next eight rows, I'm going to do decreases so every two rows is going to have one decrease or every row will have half of a decrease double crochet. So just like the other side, I'm going to do my first half yarn over and then the second half. So you can keep going doing the decreases until you get all the way back to the start because we um, have done the decreases on the decrease section as well as on the underarm portion section. So just keep doing the decreases until you get back to where you started. If you end up with only one stitch left but one more decrease needed, that's okay. You can just do a regular double crochet and it shouldn't affect anything. So now I'm back at the start and I'm just gonna do a slip stitch into that first stitch that we did. So we've got the chains here and the first stitch. Yarn over, pull through, chain up one. And now I'm going to do two more chains. So we've got three chains in total. So now we're gonna go around and do a, another lap with the double crochets. If you like the um, band trim being a little bit thinner, um, you could just stop here, but I'm going to do one more row so it's going to end up looking a bit thicker like this. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put one double crochet into each double crochet of the previous row for this underarm section. So I've got one regular double crochet into every row and we are going to do the decreases again but only for the section with the decreases. So the eight rows that had our decreases to give us the angle under the armpit those are going to still have decreases, but all the other stitches are just gonna be regular double crochets. So I'm doing a regular double, and now I'm up to this diagonal part. So for the next four stitches, I'm going to do two decreases. So one decrease here and one decrease here. So you can go ahead and do your decrease. And one more decrease. Obviously, if you've done a different number of rows for this section, just do as many as you need to do that is the equivalent of this diagonal section. But if you're following this pattern and you've done the same amount of rows as me, it's always going to be eight rows into four into two. So now that I've done those two decreases, you can go ahead for the rest of the stitches and just put one double crochet into every stitch of the previous row. So this should be easier than last time because you're just going into the previous stitches. You don't need to find a hole in the end of the row. 
So go all the way around. And if you want to see the decreases again on the other side, so around the shoulder and back to the front, then join back in and I'll show you how to do that. And then you can go ahead and do the other arm, which will be exactly the same. Okay, I've just done my last double crochet. And now into all of those stitches that had the rows with the decreases, I'm gonna do decreases again. So into the next four decrease stitches, I'm gonna do two decreases. So into the first one, and the next one, And now for the remaining stitches, we're gonna go back to doing regular double crochets. So into those last few stitches, we've just got a regular double to finish it off. And that was the last one. So now I'm gonna go into the top of the first stitch from the previous row. It's got the chains there, in through that first stitch, yarn over, pull through, Pull through again, chain up one, and pull a tail. And that's it, you should have finished your top. All that's left to do now is weave in those ends. Thanks so much for watching, I hope you found this video useful. As always, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below and I will try to get back to you. If you make any of my projects, please feel free to tag me or send me a message on Instagram at stephtashi underscore handmade. I love seeing the work that you've done. If you've made it this far in the video, I'd really appreciate it if you consider hitting that subscribe button and clicking the like button. It really helps with a small channel like mine. I hope you have a wonderful day.